If you have watched videos about how to paint and draw transparent objects, like water for example, but still find yourself struggling to understand why you have to place highlights and shadows in specific areas, and that's probably because things haven't been explained to you correctly. Keep watching, because in this video I will not only explain how light travels through transparent objects like water, but also show you how to relay this information on paper. So make sure to watch till the end to get the full knowledge and create your best water drop drawing ever. Hi, I'm Leila. Welcome to my art studio. For this tutorial, you would need graphite pencils, erasers, and smudging tools. By the way, everything I'll be teaching you, I've learned when I was studying art in Soviet Union. Okay, so let's get into the three main secrets of transparency in objects. Number one is the shape. It doesn't matter what you are drawing, each transparent object would have a shape. So for example, it can be a jug with water, or a glass of wine, or um, a drop of water, you know, our subject matter. Uh, even though a drop of water doesn't really have a vessel that holds it, you can see that the shape is pretty much almost always around. And that happens because of the surface tension of the water. So it keeps it in that little sort of a bubble. So that's the first thing that you need to do. And you can see here, no matter how many of these little drops I create, they're all uh, quite round, sometimes a little bit oval, if for example, an object is leaning a little bit more towards one side. So for that, let's draw our round little drop of water. Here we go. So we have the shape sort of around it, but just a little bit imperfect. By the way, if you would like to know how to structure other objects, please make sure to check out my Patreon page because I have a lot of different tutorials there that are not available here on YouTube. And just for $8 a month, you get access to lots and lots of information there. I already have quite a few uh, tutorials built up, so you probably will find something interesting for yourself. We also do monthly giveaways, video suggestions, and all sorts of other stuff. So make sure to go over there and check it out. I will leave the link under the video. But for now, let's get back to our drop. Secret number two is the actual secret of transparency. So we figured out the shape. You know, water is contained with that, within a shape, but now we need to think about the color. Completely transparent objects like see-through glass, not colored glass, but see-through glass, or water, don't really have any color. So what, what happens? It borrows the color of the surface that it is sitting on. So you can see here, if the drop is on the sort of a dark black almost color, you can see that that's the color that it takes on. If it's, I don't know, red or yellow or burgundy or anything else, it doesn't matter. Even if you have something with the pattern, that pattern will be visible through that drop of water. So here on this white piece of paper, we're just going to pretend that the background is white. Now our next third secret, uh, how would I say it, most difficult to sort of catch from the first go. So if you need to, make sure to rewatch this section of the video again. And that is the way the highlights are situated. Because remember, we are dealing with a transparent object, so the light doesn't just create a highlight, it actually travels through the object, hits the opposite side and then comes back. Okay, let's have a look at it in a little bit more detail. Now to better demonstrate it, I'm just going to put a little drop on this lid here. And now we can see the little drop. So if you look very closely, we have a highlight over here. And then we have a little bit of the shadow. And then we have another highlight here. And then we have another shadow, and then we have a very light highlight again. As I said, this is probably the most difficult part to understand when, you know, when it comes to drawing or painting transparent objects. So as we can see that the light travels here, 
Let's look at it through a diagram to make it a little bit easier to understand. So we have a surface that the water drop is sitting on, right? So then we have the water drop. Now the light, say 100% of the light, we can do a really big thick arrow like that. So this is 100% of the light falling from whichever side, this is what you also need to really look at very carefully, uh, is falling onto the uh, water drop. So for example, here it's hitting this little circle here, and usually the shape of the highlight would resemble the light source. So for example, here I've got a ring light, so it will be more of a rounded shape. If you have a window, you can actually have like almost like a full little window uh, imprinted depending on what shape your window is. Because 100% of the light falls here, some of it reflects back. Let's say 70% of it reflects back and goes straight into your eye, your eyes, right? So this is how you see this highlight here. But if, for example, 70% is reflecting back, then this light travels through the rest of it, say 30% of it approximately. And this 30% lights up this whole area of this object because now, see here, this object is three-dimensionally shaped outwards like that. On this side, this water drop is still an object. Remember that, even though it's, a, it's water, but it's an object. And this is its uh, fixed shape for now. So we have this concave side of it and so the light now starts to eliminate this whole area as if it was a cup or anything like this right because the object is transparent we see everything right we see all of these light changes and sometimes it can feel counterintuitive especially if you were taught about for example uh, drawing objects that are not transparent so you have the highlight then you have semi-light you know area that's lit up but not too bright then you have half shadow or semi shadow and then you've got dark shadow with some reflects and, 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 and reflections and things like that here we have light happening twice so we've got the strong highlight here and we have this lit up area uh, from underneath, you know, for, from the inside of the drop, right? Remember point two, how transparent colors borrow the color of the object that they are sitting on or that they're standing against. So here, all of these highlights and shadows will be within the range of the color of the surface. So if we're working on white paper, we are dealing with just you know, black and white situation. But if you're working uh, with color, you're painting, then you will need to look at other colors. Because water is so shiny, you will also get reflections of other colors in there as well. That is if you're working with color. Like for example, if I put an object next to the drop, you can see it very clearly reflecting in there. And of course, if you're working with color, you need to pay attention to color as well. Now, to make this a little bit more understandable, um, I will draw a little diagram of a drop that you're looking at from the top, for example. So here we have a drop. So this is the highlight here. Then we've got an area where the light is not really touching that much. In fact, you can get a little bit of the shadow, light shadow even here. Sometimes you really need to observe it. It depends on exactly the direction of the highlight, uh, of the light, you know, where the highlight is created. Next, we have this area where the shadow softly becomes lighter and lighter and lighter. And here we would have a little up area. Again, sometimes this area can be a little bit bigger. Sometimes it's a little bit almost like a crescent of the moon. You know, all depends on the situation with your highlight. If your highlight is a little bit, your light's coming a little bit from above and falling here, you might get um, one situation. Then if it's falling on the side here, it will be uh, transitioning that way. So I will draw it from the side again, just to make it a little bit uh, easier to understand. So if we have a water drop here where we have a highlight, say light direction falling from this area, we get highlight here. 
and then some of the light would be falling through to here so this whole area will be lit up right now if we have a water drop and the light is falling almost directly from the side we will have a lot of the shadow here and then this area will be lit up because we have light traveling this way you will get quite a bit of the shadow quite a bit of the highlight here and it will be quite bright and like a thin little uh, stripe okay and here in this situation uh, we will get a little bit more shadow towards the side here so I hope these diagrams make it my diagrams make it a little bit easier to understand now I'm not talking about the falling shadow yet I'm just talking about light how it goes off how it bounces back and so on when you are looking at the actual drop so what I will do now is I will shade this drop and then I will show you what we can do with the rest of the space as well. So looking at my little drop, I've got quite a rounded highlight like this here. So I'm going to um, mark that. And then I've got quite a, a quite a dark area that I can see. It's about this shape. Now, that's probably some of the darkest colors that are you know within the drop what i'm going to do is i'm going to shade all of this now i'm using a 2b pencil you can use anything as long as it's not super hard you know you don't want to be using 2h or something like that so b uh, probably from b to i don't know 3 4 b should be good enough for that So for now, I'm going to stop with a pencil and I'm going to grab my smudge stick. And give it a good smudge just like this. Now I'm going to take some of this graphite and I'm going to stretch it across into this area here. Now you see how I'm doing this? I'm doing this in these sort of a semicircles. So kind of going along with the shape of the actual drop, but every next layer is going to be just a little bit lighter than the previous one. Okay, so now we have this sort of a like a, a basic layer. What you need to understand when you're working on this stage is that this light, because remember, as I said, 70% of it, approximately, it would depend on how transparent the water is. 70% um, of it reflects back and say 30% of it goes through. So you want to make sure that this here, this highlight is the brightest part of your little drop. And then whatever light you get here will be just a little bit darker than this drop here. Again, if you are working with a different light source, like for example, if you have a window uh, that is uh, reflecting or anything like this, the this highlight will be shaped a little bit differently. So I'll just do a little diagram again just to show you. So for example, if you have like this an oval drop and you have a window in here, then you're most likely to get a little shape like this or if it's say a double window then you might get a shape like this it's not going to be exactly like the window because remember it is a rounded shape so it will be distorting that shape a little bit but make sure that you follow with whatever you have in front of you whether it's a photograph or uh, you're observing a real little drop in real life now let's have a look what would happen if we were to draw this drop sideways so here we go so this is our surface here and then we have a little drop like this so here we have the highlight for instance like that maybe and then here we have you know that light traveling through so this area here will be in shadow and this area will be catching a little bit of light now the same thing happens here so I'm going to smudge it a little bit Of 
I'm going to go over it with the eraser. So here we have the similar stage for this little drop here. Now we can go a little bit darker on this side here. So remember the shape of the highlights follows the form just like it would with any object, right? So not necessarily transparent any object because the surface reflects quite a bit. So next, what do we need to look at? So next we want to look at how the light that falls through travels, all right? So remember how I said that here we have 100% of the light, 70% of it reflects here, 30% of it follows through to here. So but of course, all the light is not going to reflect back, so we will have about, say, I don't know, 21% 20, reflecting back. All right, it'll be even fainter, so let's make this one a little bit stronger. So this one's 29% of it's reflecting, 21% uh, of it's reflecting back, and 9% keeps going through, because remember, this is, this is still a transparent object, so 9% of the light is falling through here. So what does that mean for the shadow, for the falling shadow? Cast shadow, some people call it cast shadow. So what happens is that on this diagram here, I'll show you, we have a little bit of the shadow here. So this part is still in a little bit of a shadow here. But then as the light travels through, so the light is going through here, then it falls onto here and then it travels through here, this area here becomes just slightly, just ever so slightly lit up. Okay, so that's how you get those really strange, well, they're not really strange, but to many people that don't draw transparent objects, this is how these become a little bit unusual. So then we have this shadow here, right? This is the dark shadow. And then we have this lit up area here. Sometimes what also happens, depending on, you know, where the light is falling from, you don't get a full shadow like this, you just get a water drop, highlight, shadow, and then this area is just a little bit lighter. You don't get the, the back of this. It depends, it depends on where the light is falling from. So remember this situation here. So yeah, so in this situation here, we will probably get just a little bit of the shadow here and then all this area will be lit up. In this situation here we get a bit of a shadow right underneath and then that shadow follows through and you get a little bit of the light there and then but also can sometimes depend on the um, on, on, on the quality of the material that your drop is sitting on because sometimes you can get super shiny almost like a mirror like image then you will get a very very clear shadow like that. And sometimes you might get a very, very soft, uh, like almost like a irregular a textured surface. And so then it, it becomes much softer, much more diffused, you know, because each little one of those bubbles sort of diffuses it kind of like on this lid here. It's not a very perfect, smooth uh, surface. So you don't see that you don't see it that strongly. Actually, let's try this surface here, just, just because I just want to make sure that you guys really get it, because it is a, a, a strange sort of a topic for so many, when it's actually, once you understand it, it's really easy. So see if we have this drop here, you can really see the really, really strong highlight. Now, because I'm moving the pencil around on it, it sort of looks a little bit um, weird, almost like a halo. Yeah, it's a really, really faint thing here, but you can see that dark line is a shadow and then a really strong highlight and then again a shadow again. So this is, I mean, this is a very unusual situation because of the, um, you know, this thin sort of a surface, but it's a good uh, representation of the extreme uh, of this kind of a situation. Okay, so as you can see, um, on the less of the um, reflective surface, uh, you can see it in a very smooth sort of a way. Okay, so let's have a look here. So for that, what I want to do is I'm going to really softly shade just a little bit of this background. It will just help us to get things a little bit lighter and a little bit darker if we need to. Here we go. We can do the same thing here as well. So I'm just smudging it all here as well. 
and same on this one as well just giving it a little bit of that background okay so so far we have these two semi smudged blobs now let's make these blobs into more drop like um, state so here we can see that because this is now darker we can um, create that sort of sharper edge to a degree you know because remember even though it's transparent it still has a very very um, sharp edge that again depends on the source of light that you are looking at but usually this is quite a quite a sharp shape as well so we can add some here and same here as well and giving it a little bit of a smudge remember that dark little area that I was telling you about so we need to make sure that we place that and so with this uh, looking down at the drop situation we've got almost like like you normally would have a falling shadow from an object so if this was just a little rock or something for example then you would get a specific shadow the only difference is that this shadow doesn't sort of just go through all the way so for example if the shadow here was supposed to be like that actually a little bit like that because the drop is just the highlights falling that way and the drops shape is a bit different um and then you would you would normally uh get all of this in shadow now we get that little highlight remember that that light that still travels through that nine percent of the light And for that, I'm also going to use my smudge stick. Now, this part here, remember how I said that this will be the lightest spot in your composition of the drop. This will be the darkest area. So you know how this area is quite dark, but this should be just a little bit, at least a little bit darker than that one there. now what we can do is we can sharpen this a little bit as well if we want to because remember smudging sort of makes everything softer if you are going for for example a cross hatching technique and not smudging that's fine too just make sure you are following the main guidelines so this is the darkest um, area for your drop usually again there are some how would i say it um exceptions to these rules but you know again depending what surface it's on you just saw a minute ago um, how on a super reflective surface you almost get this whole thing as a reflection rather than a shadow okay so here we go now what you want to do is you want to grab an eraser see I've got a putty eraser here you can probably do a similar thing with the um, with your regular eraser but this is just makes it a little bit easier and so as the light falls through this way this here would be the lightest part right even even though this whole area see this whole area is lit up where the light hits it so for example if the light hits it through here for instance this arrow sort of goes funny um, so this would be the next brightest area of the drop let's just tap the extra uh, graphite away just to remember not to make it lighter than this this should be the lightest area we can lit up a little bit of that light that's falling through so it's falling from here to here and now it's falling into here you see how instantly you show the transparency now remember what I said about other reflections and highlights and things like that so what happens is uh, when I have this little drop and as I move it around see I'm, I'm wearing this white sort of a um, uh, protective uh, painting thing but because it's white if I bring it quite close I can see that there's quite a bit of light that's reflecting in there so if you have things like that make sure that you include them in sometimes they can be little things 
like this. Sometimes they can be like little spots. Sometimes if, for example, you are working on the window, for instance, and then you can see the trees reflecting in there, you might get little patches that are a bit darker on the highlight as well. Or just, just to show you, I don't have it on my little drop, but just to show you, um, say if there's something else like the light that it you know comes from something else so then you can get another little flick of light so just make sure you study your um, uh, you know your little drop that you have in front of you quite closely okay so I'm gonna go over this All right now let's have a look at what happens uh, when we have the drop that is sort of lying there sideways we, we have changed our position we're looking at it sideways so then we will have this area here that's quite lit up like that it's quite bright you can get a little bit of it here as well again it would depend on where the light is coming from and the position that you are actually looking at the drop from and then we can have a stronger highlight on this side here as well now because it's on this sort of a you know it's sitting on the surface here so I'll just make this a little bit more visible because it all got smudged oh by the way the shape of the drop would also depend on the surface that it's sitting on sometimes you can get a drop sitting on something like this like a little dome and sometimes you can have surface especially surface that has a little bit of texture on it or it's sort of a, it sits like that uh, a lot of say if you put a drop on the plate you're most likely to get this shape but if you have a drop sitting on the leaf you know especially leaf that sort of repels the water a little bit you get that almost like a little bead you know it's it's the the surface where the water is touching the leaf is much smaller than say something like that so shape again could be different depending on what you're drawing and just to bring that out a little bit, I'm just going to shade this a little bit more here. Now, because shadow and light are falling quite flat on this, if maybe you're not looking exactly from the side, but just a little bit from the top, you might be able to see just a little bit of the light on there and a little bit of the shadow just here. Again, it all depends on how you are looking at it okay it's a bit too bright so i'll just soften it okay so here we go so this is the the basic sort of a thing that the secrets or they're not really secrets they're more of the just technique of understanding of what you need to look for and how light travels through transparent objects now if you have a semi-transparent object like water especially clean water is super transparent what if it's for example a juice in a glass right it's still quite transparent but it might be a little bit orange for example so then you will get some of this happening but quite a bit of it would be quite dull right now if you have like an orange juice with the pulp for instance right a really thick kind of juice that's almost non-transparent then you will not be able to see this uh, for, you know effect happening then the area where you see the juice will be affected and the same way by the light like any normal non-transparent object would be so always make sure that you check how transparent something is and remember it doesn't even matter say for example you might have a glass of water right so if, say this is the glass here i'll just draw it as a little rectangle and you have light that is falling here so you have highlight on the side right say let's let's put it like that like this little diagram so this is the brightest highlight that you have. Normally with objects, you would have semi-light, then you will have semi-shadow, and then you'll have a shadow. That's if you're working on a cup that's non-transparent. If you have a transparent object, you've got highlight here, and then you have a little bit of the sort of a shadow here, semi-shadow right next to the highlight. So see, they kind of swap. And then because the light travels through and some of it, this is not a very straight line, is it? <laughs> travels through and then you start to get that semi light here okay so you see the difference and you see why so many people get confused because if you're used to drawing 
non-transparent objects, you will be confused about this. Okay, so what you need to do is you need to observe and you need to know these rules. So then you get the semi light here. So again, an area that has quite a bit of light, but not too much light. So this one we can make really, really bright here. Let's highlight. Okay, and then that light keeps falling through. And of course, you have the shadow like you normally would. But in the middle of that shadow, you would have that highlight again so area which is lighter than even the rest of for example table or whatever this says tablecloth that it's standing on um, then you get even a stronger light and why because you do have light falling through to here but remember as the light goes through it becomes duller at every next point so if this is very bright like you know as i said 70 percent here um, then here we get 30 percent traveling through to here and then here we've got 9% traveling through to here, okay? Approximately, I mean, again, it would depend, as I said, on the transparency. So if we have, for example, um, I'll just draw another thing here for you guys. You know, as I said about the juice thing, if, for example, we have a transparent glass, right? So all of these rules would apply to the glass. But if, for example, you have uh, semi-transparent water so water with maybe a little bit of I don't know say pink dye in it right so you've got this pink drink or whatever all the rules would apply you just have if you're using color you just have to add a little bit of color now if you have a really thick uh, liquid I don't know like tea with milk for example right it's cloudy so it blocks the light going through and the milk itself is uh, the, the the tea itself is quite dark as well so you get that very sort of a stable color so you would treat this area here as a transparent object and this area here as a block object as an object that has the highlight and then semi light and then semi shadow and a dark shadow and of course some reflections from other sides okay so just something to remember when you're drawing on those things and as i said if you're interested in lots of different things please check out the patreon where uh, you know, you can even ask for videos or certain things if you want me to explain and things like that. And it's really not expensive and it's a lot of fun over there. I promise. So go over there and check it out. And remember, always get in touch with me. If you're joining the Patreon, get in touch with me. So then I know a little bit more about what you're after. Do you want more drawing uh, uh, tutorials or painting tutorials and so on? Very important. I like finding out that kind of stuff about you guys. Okay. So, as you can see, it's very easy once you understand that specific structure of light following through and reflecting back. If you have any questions or any ideas of what you want me to show you next, if I don't have it here already or on Patreon, please put them down in the comments. I promise I read all of them. I try to. Uh, whatever, whatever YouTube lets me read, I read. <laughs> let's put it that way. <laughs> so... I want to say a big, big thank you to my wonderful, wonderful patrons who are supporting this channel because you guys, all these materials and things like that are not that cheap. So um, thank you so much for your support. And I hope you guys have enjoyed this video. You got a lot out of it. Again, let me know in the comments what you think. Subscribe if you haven't. And I will see you soon in the next video. Have a lovely day.